Hi, I'm Robin Hardin. I'm your host today on Dreamcatcher. I want to invite you to be inspired by people just like you who have decided to catch their dreams. On today's program, Carrie is seeking answers from the Lord that I just can't give her. Kendra is seeking something of value. I have a young girl that is seeking help from anyone who will listen. But first, watch as Shonda is seeking help in a hospital from both nurses and from police officers. This Robin. I have a dream selfie for you. Um, this took place uh, in a hospital and the procedure I was getting done was a colonoscopy. And I know that it was a colonoscopy because I had a colonoscopy before. So uh, at the time, the doctors were not in the room and this tube, I could, I was looking at the tube and whatever was going through the tube, it was clear. And I kind of messed with it for a minute. And then, you know, I put it in my hand and the, the, it was a clear tube and there was something clear going through the tube. Well, um, all of a sudden there was like this brown stuff. I don't know what it was, but I don't know if it was a backup, but it was going through the tube. And I was like, I've got to get out of here. I've got to get out of here. So I was taking the mask off my face for I guess for the oxygen uh, when they put you under um, but um, I was calling for the doctors and the doctors came in there and I remember seeing this one doctor in particular he was um, uh, he was like a Middle Eastern Indian guy and there was a white lady and might have been another per doctor with him and I don't I know the, the Indian guy, he was a, a doctor. Not sure who the other two uh, women were. But I was trying to get out of this room and I was running from them. And they were chasing me, trying to get me back in there or whatever. And once I went downstairs, and this is still a hospital, once I went downstairs, there's people around. And at one point, it looked like I was trying to call the police. No, the police, I don't... I, I told them, you know, what was going on. And then um, there was this lady at the desk, at the information desk, and I was trying to tell her, you know, what was going on. But no one, no one wanted to help me. They, they was just, and I'm like, are you gonna help me? They, you know, they couldn't help me. That's it. Shonda, thank you for this pretty graphic dream. But it's very important, the message that the Lord has for you. He's showing you that the doctors, people that you know, that you should be able to trust and respect, they are very personally infusing you with something that is incorrect. These are people that are um, being very invasive at a personal level with you. And they're doing what on from first appearance would seem is something that's good for you. A colonoscopy obviously is good for you. However, what they're infusing in you is waste. It starts out clear at first, but it becomes waste. And then at some point you realize that something's wrong and you pull off your mask and you try to get away. You mentioned that your doctor was Middle Eastern Indian. I believe that the Lord is showing you that some of what's happening to you is an influence from a Middle Eastern maybe doctrine. Not that anyone is different than anyone else. I'm talking about um, the Eastern religions that come against the religion of Christianity. And I believe that the Lord is warning you of doctrines other than Christianity that might be being infused into you by people that you feel like you should be able to trust. And then when you go and you try to tell the police officers and you try to tell the receptionist, you don't get any help. And I believe you said they couldn't help you. So keep that in mind when you're looking for help. Not everyone recognizes the danger or recognizes what's going on. If this were a real hospital situation, the receptionist especially would assume that this testing, this colonoscopy that you were getting was something for your good health. But you knew in your spirit that something was wrong. So really take account of the people in your life 
people that you respect and you should be able to trust and listen to the words they're telling you. Make sure what they're putting into you on a personal level is something that lines up with God's Word. Put it in the whole picture. What do you feel? What, is, what do you see? What do you think? Go with your first thought. When you write your dream down, what did you think? I was asking you, I think, how did you feel? What do you think? People say, I had this dream, and I think it was a child. If you think it's a child, write it was a child. Because your brain is just trying to catch up with your spirit. That's what's going on. Your spirit knows it was a child. Your brain's going, I think it was a child. Chances are, it's not about it being a child. It's about the innocence and the childlike faith. That's why your brain's going, I think it was a child. It wasn't necessarily the child. It was what she represented. In your dreams, look at everything as a symbol. It doesn't mean they always are, but you think they are. Look at it. What does this mean? If what, what does that mean in real life? So you all dream about celebrities. What does that celebrity mean to you in real life? If, you, if it's a friend, it could be that person. It could just mean she might represent a friend. This means that person. Um, Ask the Lord, what does this mean? What does this symbol mean? How did you feel when you woke up? Were you scared? Were you excited? Were you, you know, what did, what, what did you think her motive was? She said this to me. In the dream, did it feel like she was being deceitful? Or was she being honest? Write those things down. That would help you. But I, I literally would go car ministry, read blood of Jesus, and, and, and just write those words, and then I go, feel sad, feel happy. This is, and then you, then you pray about that, and it comes. It doesn't usually just come like that. It will, eventually. But write down, even even today, I'll go through with it, and I'll just write just the symbols: force, power. The, you know, what does that represent? A unicorn. Here's an interesting: a unicorn is magic. It's not even real. It's fantasy. And yet, a woman had a dream when a unicorn was the Lord. And I thought, how could that be? Because he's, he was, he, I'm trying to remember how it went, but he was, um, he was a child, and it was childlike faith, and, and that hope for the, for the mysterious, and that hope for things that, that we don't see, but we know are real. And so he can use anything. I had a woman dream about a Native American something, and I can't remember how it was, but it was totem poles or something. And we know that's not of the Lord. But she was Native American descent. And he had to talk to her about what she understood. And he was talking to her through symbols that she understood. And that's biblical because Paul says to the people with the unknown God, he didn't say, shame on you, worshiping idols. He said, let me tell you about this unknown God. He met them where they were. He talked to them about what they knew. You know, we today would go, well, you're worshiping a rock. What do you know? But he didn't do that. He said, let me tell you about this element. I know God. His name is Jehovah. Paul talked to people in the way that they understood. God is doing the same for us. So don't erase everything you know. Just erase everything that we've been taught and go, well, what are you trying to say to me? If you're considering being a guest on Dreamcatcher, but you're afraid because your dream is personal, I want to assure you, I will never embarrass you. I will not uncover you. My next guest is a perfect example of that. We sat down, she shared a dream, but it became so personal that she just didn't want it shared with the public. So what you're about to see is the answer without uncovering her, but helping her with an answer that she's seeking, the same answer many of you are seeking from the Lord. But then I like to think, well, God has this path planned out for each and every single person, like mm -hmm. to, for mm -hmm. a couple, as mm -hmm. a couple, right? I thought. And he has plans to prosper us and not to harm us for hope in a future. That's his word. But then we get in the way. And so we have a perfect will and we have a permissive will. We don't all walk in his perfect will. So he permits us to walk another way, you know, and so it... it it all depends. We have our own choices, and it all depends on a relationship. He has his own mind. He has his own choice. And whether God, even if God said, I want you to be with her, 
He still has a choice not to because God wants us to be with him and we can choose not to. And so then we live below what he has for us. It is horrible. And I believe most of us do live below what he has for us. No, but I believe that in general, most believers live below what he has for us. There's so much more. I don't think any of us are living really where he wants us. Because we're not raising the dead yet. I mean, I'm not. I'm not speaking. My shadow isn't healing people. I think he wants it too. And it's not yet. So when, when, I can, when I can lay hands on a dead person and raise them, then yeah, then I'll be where God wants me. Wow. Because they did in the, in the book of Acts. And if they did it, we can do it. And if Peter's shadow healed people, our shadow should heal people. So I strive for that. But until I get that, I, don't, I think, no, we're living below our means. The Word says that we will do greater things than Jesus mm, did. And until I'm doing greater things than Jesus did, <laughs> then I'm living below what He has for me. I think. I mean, that's... I think there's so much more that we're not tapped into. And we just have to keep focused on Him. And, and I would caution you not to let this person in your life pull your attention away. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're... Fo and that's, hard, that's easy to do. I mean, that's because we live in this flesh. But we've got to make sure that our focus is on Him and make the kingdom of heaven first. And then all these things are given to us. And as much as you want good things for His life and you want really what's best for Him, God wants it even more. So you're in agreement with God when you pray for Him, as long as you're praying what's mm -hmm. best for Him. Mm -hmm. You're in agreement with God. Like we know your heart because I know you. I don't know him, so I don't know his heart. God knows both hearts. And even That's if we know someone, we don't know their heart like God knows their heart. So praying for him is the answer. It's really the answer. Pray for his blessing. Pray for, you know, bless him, prosper him, keep him safe, keep him well, whatever. However you pray and you intercede for him in his behalf. That's really the answer. God will do what, he's, what needs to be done here. But those are the kind of prayers He answers. That's real love, is I want what's best for Him. I want what you want for Him. Because we know God wants what's best for Him. And I've just been in the middle, midst of it, just trying to figure out if that's me or if it's not me. Is it me mm -hmm. or is it not me? Mm -hmm. God, is it me? <laughs> like, I just need well, but to prayer, know. But prayer is Jesus. always okay. <laughs> need to know. You know, de the devil's never going to ask you to pray for someone. The devil is not going to encourage you to pray for someone. So if you're praying for someone, that's him. I know. I know it's God. I have no doubt about that. But I'm like, is there somebody else that you want me to be with God? Or is it him? Or is it someone else? Like, because you know mm -hmm. everything, and I know I know nothing And that's God. okay to ask that. And ask I just, him. where do I get the mm -hmm. answer? Mm -hmm. That's the answer. You, you're, you're, you're seeking the right person for the answer. I know, but I don't feel like I've got that. Well, I think you're doing the right answer. thing by, by praying for him. But if it's not what he wants, you don't really want it. You think you want it. But if, if, if this person simply is not who God has for you, no. you really don't want it. And so it's okay, God's big enough for you to say, okay, God, look, I've been praying, I've been wanting, I've been trying to figure it out for X minute, you know, however long it's been, and I just need to know. But be willing to lay them down. I know. And then, then oh. there's freedom in that. There really is freedom in that. Mm -hmm. You know, like I did just throw mm -hmm. it all down. Like mm -hmm. I felt that was denying myself because I'm like, if I'm willing to get beaten. Yeah, but God doesn't know? want us beaten. I know. That's not, that's a, that's a false uh, sacrifice. That's not something that, that the Lord wants for us. You're his daughter. He doesn't want us to be, he, he doesn't want us to be unequally yoked together. He wants us to be with someone that, you know, that loves us and, 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 and respects us. And he wants us to be with someone who treats us like Jesus treated women. Like that's what I want. Right. And I really just want to be treated like a lady. Yeah. And just and that's not asking too much. Qualities. Jesus treated women like Gentle, ladies. Yeah. Like gently. Mm -hmm. I need that. Well, that's and how that's Jesus like, treated women. I know. You want someone to treat you like Jesus treated women. That's okay to ask for. That's good to ask for. Because that's what he wants for you. You're his daughter. That's what he wants for you. So you're, you're praying in agreement with him.
He wants someone to love you and treat you gentle. He and treated the women gentle. Someone that has a really pure heart too, mm -hmm. like purity and innocence, integrity, mm -hmm. and all these high qualities. Like you want a man of God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, I mean, that's what you're describing. You want a man of God, and when you pray for a man of God, a truly a man of God, mm -hmm. you're praying in agreement with what the Holy Spirit wants for you. You will get that because that's what He wants for you to have as well. Hey there, I have something very exciting I want to share with you. The new Dreamcatcher Journal. It's geared to help you catch your dreams with over 50 scriptures, inspirational words, and revelations, all pointing to dreams and dream interpretation. In the back, there's a quick reference that helps you with colors. Maybe you keep waking up at the same time or you have a favorite number that follows you. 44 different time scriptures, I call them, to help you find Find out what it is the Lord is saying to you. Straight from the Bible, symbols that you can compare your dreams with and find the scripture that might help you interpret your dream. In addition, there's 195 different symbols from past dream interpretations that will help you to catch your dream. Order yours today. helping me mm -hmm. to understand yeah. what God has been telling me, but I wasn't hearing mm -hmm. or I wasn't comprehending because it's like you're my teacher. Mm -hmm. You're teaching me and you're showing me things. Mm -hmm. Things that I know. I'm just confirming I'm not, it. <laughs> I'm not grasping. Yeah, I'm just confirming You're, you're saying, no, mm -hmm. did grasp mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. because what you think is right. Yeah. Don't question. That's it. And that's what you're doing for me, is you're just telling me, huh. I'm just coming alongside, because the Holy Spirit's teaching you, and I'm going, that's it, Debbie, just don't listen. Question don't anymore. question, because that is, because I was that is what we do. Are you seeking an answer from the Lord? Have you been waiting for this answer, and maybe you feel like He doesn't hear you? He's not answering? Perhaps He's already given the answer. Perhaps you just haven't recognized Maybe you're not hearing his voice. That's what happened in this next dream. It's a viewer dream I want to share with you from a young girl. She was seeking an answer. She didn't think anyone was hearing, but the Lord answered her in big, bold letters written across the wall. Watch. I had a person had a dream. I believe it was a young person. She had emailed it to me, and I, and I didn't get a name. But, I mean, her name was Sarah, I believe, but I didn't know, it. I didn't know a, an age. And she was talking about writing on the walls in crayon. And she said, Mom and Dad didn't care, which makes me think she's at least a minor. And she's writing all over the walls in her house. And she said it was a big black marker. And she was writing things like, I can't take it anymore. Uh, no one hears me. I mean, desperate cries for help. And she sends me this dream, and she wants to know what it, what it means. And I even got the feeling that she may not, she was either not a believer or she was a new believer. And I, and I pointed out to her, when you have a dream, pick apart everything. She didn't use a little bitty thing. She used big old fat crayons, black, and it was black marker. She was screaming. She wasn't writing a pencil. She was screaming on the walls for someone, someone to hear her. Her mother and father didn't get after her in the dream. This child wasn't getting enough discipline. She, these were parents who were not saying, giving her any boundaries. She was crying for boundaries. She knew she wanted someone to care about her. She said something, no one hears me. And I said, God hears you. You're crying out, and he's showing you that he hears you. When you have a dream, God was communicating with her, and she was communicating back in print, in writing. I was able to email her back, and, and, and she felt like, after hearing it, that she was able to go to the Lord and, and then verbalize what she had been in her dream. She had so much going on, she couldn't verbalize it, but he gave her the words. He gave her the way out through a dream. Everyone on today's program, in their dreams, are seeking something. I'm seeking something as well. I'm seeking guests to be on my program. If you have a dream from the Lord and you want help with that, God has given me the ability to give you peace through understanding. 
that kind of peace is valuable. And that reminds me of or my next guest that's coming up, Kendra. In her dream, she's seeking something, something that's very valuable to her. There was a man, there were some steps that were going down to, I don't know where, and on the side of it, uh, it was almost like there were steps in the middle of, um, like a lot of grass okay. area. Okay, but it wasn't grass. There was snow everywhere. And I just remember this gentleman trying to like go down these steps and he was on his tippy toes. He was really tall, he was on his tippy toes. And he didn't want to slide because if he went off the last step, he was gonna fall all the way down or something. Okay, so I was on the side in the snow and my purse, which was, you know, the little, um, you call it, little throw over your purses, mm -hmm. um, had my debit card in it. And some little kids, I think it was Brooklyn and somebody, Brooklyn and Peyton maybe, Peyton is my nephew, Brooklyn is her daughter. I met Brooklyn. Yes. They ran up to put something in a trash can that was up on the sidewalk. And I went up there to say, what do you do? Like, don't do that or, you know, just whatever you have to do with the children. And I come back and my purse is covered in snow and I don't know where it is. And it has my debit card in it. So then my, my dad and my sister and Tiffany are saying, why did you bring your purse anyway? And I said, well, it had my debit card in it. And, you know, Tiffany was like, why did you bring your purse anyway? <laughs> like, Daddy is here. He will. What are you buying anything anyway? My dad is here. And that was it. But I was I tried to go back to like go in the snow, but the snow was so deep. I was just like, oh it. Sometimes snow, because it's white, we, we automatically think it's righteousness. <laughs> but think about what snow does, it covers. And we don't know what's under that snow. It might be something of value, which your purse was. Or it might just be a mud hole. I mean, it's covers. So it can be very deceptive. And um, you may be very careful. You might fall down the steps, you know. So he's showing you that not everything that looks like him is him. And, and that he was, you're trying to help this person, and, and then you got distracted with the kids, and then when you got back, you're- No, I wasn't helping the man. Oh, you were no, not. I, just, I was just, just walking with him. Okay. And he was trying and to tip it And he's very careful. Yes. Because, if, because there's danger involved. If he falls, he's going to get in the snow. The snow got so deep, you had trouble. <coughs> you gave up looking for your purse. The snow, a lot of times, is just deception. And it's a covering. It's very quiet. It's silent. It's peaceful. But what's underneath there? So we have to, it's a, it's a, very, it's a real message of being careful of looking at the surface. Because on the surface it was beautiful, but you lost your something of value was covered up and you couldn't even go back to get it. And so it's about looking beneath the surface and not being too distracted because you have you have something of value, and I believe it's spiritual value, not money. That obviously, because you have this dream a lot, you had that dream when I met you in 2013. Your dream was about mm -hmm. a purse being missing. Yes. And so the enemy's been trying to steal something of value from you for a long time. But don't make sure your focus is, is laser sharp and that you're not deceived by that nice, peaceful, white, but he looks so good, you know, but what's underneath? It might be, you know, it might be a junk door, it might be a blood trouble, it might be something of value. But don't let him deceive you. A distra I keep feeling like it's a distraction. The children are going over there. The to tell the children mm -hmm. how to do. And when you did all the treasures, it's gone. And what you were doing were right. You were doing the right thing. You were doing the work of the Lord, not letting the children do whatever. We can get so busy doing God stuff mm -hmm. that we miss what He has for us. And what he has for us is valuable. You know, I can get very busy doing God, not just good things, but God things. But what did he call me to do? What did he tell me? This is what I want you to do. 
I'll give you an example of the line. I was going to have lunch with my former pastor's wife, Monica. We were going to have lunch. We try to have one lunch once a month just to stay connected. And it's very hard for us because we're both busy. And I really wanted to go to lunch. But then I stopped by Joseph's Storehouse at Food Ministry, and there's this little lady there. And I'm, I'm just going to describe her because it kind of tells you where she is. She has no teeth. She's about this tall. She has long, straggly hair. She probably lives in a little single white trailer. I mean, she's, she's one of the lesser of these. And, I, and she wants me to stop and talk to her. She needs some counsel. And I'm thinking, this or Monica, and I want to go have lunch, and I want to just enjoy my time with my friend, and I chose her. Now, Monica would have been a good thing. We would have talked about Jesus. We would have, would have had a good lunch. But God wanted me to be with this little lady, who I didn't know, but had received a letter from her son, who was in the state penitentiary, where he was coming clean of everything he's done, because the Lord has told him that he has to admit his sins and confess them so he can be saved. Now, I could have gone and had a nice lunch and talked about Jesus and let God things, or I could have stayed here with one of the lesser of these mm -hmm. and help her read a letter that was very difficult for her to read, admitting to some criminal activity that was freeing him so the Lord could walk in him. So be careful. The snow could have covered it. I could have been, I could have gone up a little bit and, and missed something of that. And that's a reoccurring dream. So that's something. Well, because you're probably very big hearted and very yeah. wanting to help yeah. and, yeah. and getting distracted. Yeah. But God has this for you to do. And while you're doing all this other stuff, He's got other people to do this. He's yeah. called you to do this. And while you're doing so, what they need yeah. to be doing, maybe they're not doing it, but that's really none of your business. They're supposed to be doing what they're supposed to be doing to free you up to do what you're supposed to be doing. Mm. Was this recording? <laughs> <laughs> And I think family relationships are much more important than romantic ones. My brother will always be my brother. My, my two brothers, my six sisters, will always be my sisters. We can fight, we can get upset with one another, but we will always be family. But the boys I've dated in my life, I can't even remember their names. Really? I can. Well, I'm a lot older than you. <laughs> <laughs> but I, honestly, I don't remember the names of a lot of the boys I dated, That boys that I would stay up at night and cry over. I don't remember their names. But my family will always be with me. Next time on Dreamcatcher, my guests in real life have conquered their battles over alcohol addiction and drug addiction. Leanne has long been free from the influence of drugs, and yet she dreams of a bag of drugs and a large green neon bug. Jody, she too, has been delivered from addictions, but now, as you can see, she needs to be delivered from guilt and condemnation. Whatever you need deliverance from, God is the deliverer.